Good day, good day, good day, good day. Welcome back to class. In this lesson, we are going to talk about CSS inside of HTML. CSS inside of HTML. Let's use consult. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You know what? I have another wonderful gift for you. Another wonderful gift for you. You want to know? Let's meet at the end of this lesson. Stay true, watch to the end, and receive your gift. There is a free gift that I'm giving you. A free gift that I am giving you. So watch to the end and receive this gift just for free. Just for free. Okay. So here we go to the other, in our other video or in our previous video. In this lesson, as I said, we'll talk about CSS in html so let's create another wonderful file okay let me check something first okay so open your html folder create another wonderful file and let's call it css.html control okay there we go so it has been open nicely let me get our structure there we go let's come down and begin the good work we have started okay so we see today is what html palace sorry css day html css day html css day that's fine so let's learn a bit before we move on okay before we move on somebody might be asking what is css why should i learn it is it very very important for me so, let me take this guy css and we learn it okay we learn that and know what it means the first of all you should know the meaning of these letters CSS is just an abbreviation and stands for the system of cascading. Cascading. The S stands for style sheet. That's the first S. Okay, style. Okay, I'm call it style. And the last S is for sheet. So normally we combine two S and call them. Um, Call them style sheet, okay? So you mostly see style sheet as the short form, okay? Style sheet. I don't know this. Oh, what is this? Okay. You go up here. You don't bring the sheet. That's fine. Hmm? We have S attached to this. So CSS stands for cascading style sheet. Now, <laughs> let me try and see if I would be able to explain this. Even though we haven't started CSS yet. CSS or the cascading means in the English language to fall. It also used, it is also used to represent waterfall, okay? Waterfall. So uh, the word cascade, cascading is very, very important and you will know how to use it and what it means in our next lessons when we start with css okay okay now we move on to style okay style is just the css the styling as we did in our earlier video we learned how to apply colors and we also learned how to apply some font sizes and other stuff okay so the styling is what we call the style and the sheet that contains the style is what we call the sheet. <laughs> is what we call the sheet. Okay, so that's basically what this stuff stands for. Okay. CSS is a web. You can control the layout of multiple web pages all at once. The layout of multiple web pages all at once. We'll come to that later on. Okay. Come to that later on. So what is CSS? As I said, CSS stands for cascading style sheet, and it is used to format the layout of a web page. 
format the layout. It is easy to format, format, sorry, format the layout, the layout, the layout of a web page. Web page. We used to format the layout. Let me go out here. Or something used to format ah, to format is this to format the layout of a web page. With CSS, you can control the color, the font size of the text, the space in between elements, how elements are positioned and laid out, what background images or background colors are to be used, different displays for different devices and screen sizes, and even much more. The word cascading means that a style applied to a parent's element will also apply to all children elements within their parents. So if you set the color of the body text to the blue or headings, paragraph, and other text element within the body will also get the same color unless you specify something else. Oh, so that's basically what cascading means. But when we move or we dive deeper in CSS in the technical part of it, you will understand better what a cascading is. So for now, we just take this. So even though it wouldn't be that necessary, you'll have to stick with this for now. Okay, so using CSS, there are three ways. Okay, we are saying that cascading style sheet is used to format the layout of a web page. We have three ways in which we add or our CSS file and HTML files do communicate, okay? There are three ways in which you can bring a communication or have a communication between HTML and CSS, okay? Okay, so there, there the first two ways will deal directly with the HTML document. That is, it is part of your HTML document and the last and the most important part will deal with uh, will be an external file different from your HTML file, and there will be the need to learn them together. There will be the need to learn them together. It is always important to use the third method because the third method will help you apply that styling that you have chosen or written to all web pages or all websites that you decide to design, okay? So let's learn the methods. Okay, so let me see, methods of, of line, line CSS to HTML. So the first method, method number one, we call it the inline method, which I've already used some inline method. I've already used some in our previous videos. This requires the use of the style attribute, new style attribute. Okay. So these are very key things that you need to get in the methods of applying CSS to HTML. Then, so we are saying with the inline method, you need a style attribute. Okay, so with the next method, we call it the internal, okay? Internal method, the internal method. That one, you will need the style element. Please, there are differences between attributes and elements, and I'm very sure that by now, you know what the difference are or the difference are okay then you move on to the next one we call it the external external method external method and that requires css file separate separated from HTML file, okay. HTML file. Okay, so that's it. 
there are three methods. The inline method requires what the style attribute. The internal method requires style element, and the external method requires CSS file separated from the HTML file and link header maybe. Let me add this one and link link together. That's fine. Okay. So the most common way to do this is by use external, which is very, very important. We'll come to that one later on, okay? Now we move on. Let's take it one after the other and dive a bit deeper. Mm -hmm. Okay, so number one, you see the line, okay? Line method. Line method. Let's note some key things about the line method over here. One, it is used to apply a unique style. I need this. And we also need it. A unique style to, okay, let me use these guys. Use. to apply a unique style to a single HTML element. Sorry. Single HTML element. Okay. Single. Hmm? Single HTML element. That's fine. Then an inline CSS uses the style style rot attribute. That's right. You got it right? Okay. It uses the style attribute. Attribute. So we'll learn how to use that one later on. Let's move on to the internal CSS. Okay. Internal CSS. Okay. So let's take it. An internal CSS is used to define a style for a single HTML field. So single HTML field, right? Note the differences. It's a single HTML element, and internal is what a single HTML page. Very, very important. Very, very, very important. Okay, let's continue. Single HTML, what? Page. Then the next thing, an internal CSS is defined in the head reading, okay? So those inside the head element. element. It goes inside the head element, okay? Okay. And it should be within let me take you. No. It should be within a star element. So please take your notes. In line goes for what a single element and it uses the style attribute. Okay, it applies a unique styling. Single HTML for now and goes inside the head element. And um, also, it might be within a style element. Okay, so that's that. Then the external. I take last one. Alex external, which is the most recommended external CSS. Okay, the most recommended. Okay, so let's continue. How is this done? It's used to define styling, styling, okay, for many web pages, web pages, okay, many web pages. The next thing, right? The CSS 
in a dot CSS extension you extension file. Create the CSS file to the HTML by using the link element. Okay, that's fine. The link element, the link element element has three attributes necessary to successfully successfully learn ESS to the attributes are one they are one the real attribute the real attribute specifies the relationship of the relationship between the HTML and and the CSS. Okay, uh, it has and it always have the value. That's fine. Then the next attribute is the HERF, which we call it the hypertext hypertext reference as pending source source sorry. Or part of the ESS file. Then the most important thing we use the link element, the link element inside. Uh, and element, element, the link element inside the head element. There is more and more and more if you want to write about the external, but you will simplify stuff here and you will understand better and you will understand better. So now let's take examples. We have learned a lot. We are now seeing a quick recap, a quick recap, then we move on. We are now saying that there are three main ways to add your CSS to your HTML file. Okay, to add your CSS to your HTML file. The first method is called the inline method, which applies what a styling to a single HTML element in your HTML file. The next one or the second one is the internal CSS, which applies what a CSS to a single HTML web page. Then the last and the most recommended and important one is the external CSS, which applies CSS to many, many, many web pages. So we'll learn how to do this accordingly, then we'll continue from there.
Okay, so let us continue. We'll take examples and see how to deal with it. How to deal with this. So let's go on. Example number one. Okay, I'll just follow on the paragraph element and say um and inline CSS, okay. Line CSS. Then let's see. I received received um, color to the uh, The style attribute, okay. Style attribute. That's fine. Now let's come here. So we are coming to add what a nice color to this paragraph by using inline CSS. First of all, we said with the inline you need what a style attribute. Okay, so I just follow my style. By now you should know what an attribute is. Okay. So when you come here, this P is the name of the element which is in this paragraph element. After the P, there is a space and we get what style. So the style becomes an attribute to the paragraph element over here. That's really, really great. Then just after the name of an attribute, you should have an equal to sign and open and closing what quotes or oh, okay quotation marks you're getting it the quotation marks can be either double or single or can be most of the time use the double it doesn't mean you can to use a single each and every one of them is highly acceptable okay so that's it then i'll call on the color property so we are saying we are using the style attribute then calling on the color property and we are giving it the long green as it is stated here long green so this is the color that we are giving our so this was an inline method an inline method okay this is not the only thing that we can apply we can also even choose to set what a background color hmm? background color let me just copy this guy and paste copy and paste it here okay in this case, I'll just call on background, background color, and I should be going to go. Okay, that's fine. So I've used the style attribute to apply color and also to apply background color. I can still use this to apply what um, um font sizes. Let's say I want to change the font size of this element. Now you can see. After the equal to sign, you have your double quote, and the first thing that comes after the double quote, we call it a property. The property is maybe a style about or a style of the element that you want to apply changes to. There are different, different styling, okay? Different, different styling. Now, whichever one that you would want to apply changes or call this or make changes, you will have to call it. So in this case, we are calling the color property of the element, uh, the paragraph element, okay? And we are changing it from the normal black color to now what? A long green. So we said this is what the property and the long green is called the value of the property. Between the property and its value, there is always what? A color, a color, as you can see over here. Just after the value of the property, you should have what uh, a semicolon. So if I would want to add another property, let's say the font size is too small for me. If I would want to add another one, I come just after the colon of the value of the first property I have specified. 
I hope I'm making sense. Then I will give a space between that one and the new property that I'll be calling, in this case, font size. Okay, I'll just choose font size from the options I'm giving and I'll set it to maybe 45 pixels. So I have changed the font size as well as the color property of the paragraph elements. I hope it is making sense. Let's say if I want to go add something again, add something again, then I will have to go after the semicolon of the 45 pixels, which is the value for the font size. Give a space and call on a new word, a new, a new word, a new property. Okay, so maybe video by directional uh, overflow, uh, override, then I will be able to do that. Okay. Or better if I want a border, I can call on a border, okay, and do that accordingly. So with the border, I will need a size. That's MPX, how thick the border should be, and the type of the border, which we usually go in for the solid. And then I will have to specify the color for the border. Okay, I will have to specify the color for the border. So in that case, uh, I will just give it a color of, let me a very nice color. Purple will be fine. Okay, purple. Okay, let me take the palm or the plume. Pro plus S. Let me copy the path here, paste it inside my browser, and I am going to see my work. Okay, going to see my work. So I'll just open a new tab, then this is click on enter, wait for it to load, and I'll be very lucky to see my work. Very, very lucky to see my work. Oh, that's really fun. That's really fun. Okay, so this is what we have done so far. You see that the initial color for everything on your web page is the color black. It's the color black. If you would want to change the color, then you will have to call on the color property of that element. Okay, call on the color property of that element and change the color. In this case, we have called on the color property of this paragraph element. And we have changed the color from the initial black to the color long green now, okay? And we have also specified a border just around our paragraph. Now, when you come here, we have changed the background color, which is always white, to now the long green. But the color and other properties of this paragraph remains the same and unpatched. Remains the same and what? On touched, which is very, very important. Okay, now that's that. We'll move on to the next one. So, what we just tackled is what? Uh, let me call it this guy, H2. Go back, let me call H2 element and say this is what? A line, line, ESS. Method one. That's fine. I would still want to change the properties of this. I would, I would change the font size here. So I'll just call on my style attribute first one, bam, equal. Okay. Then I will call on the font size property. Then I will equate it to let's say 40. Or better still, 50 will be okay. Okay, let me give it 50 pixels so that it stands a bit away from there. So, control plus S. Let me go to my browser, refresh it, and see my outcome. So you can now see that I've changed the what the CSS method one font size to something a bit, a bit bigger and readable. You could see it is even bigger than the H1 element, which is supposed to be bigger than the word H2 element. Okay, that's really fine. So I have done or dealt with, uh, and I'm sure that you really understand the inline method now. Okay, 
the next thing that we will be tackling is what? Could you tell me? We'll tackle the we'll tackle the next method, which is what? H2. And I'll call it the internal method, okay? Internal method. That was right. That's fine. Now let's come here and go down. Right. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, and internal, internal, ESS. Let me go on again. Um, a second, internal. And I'll see if it yes, yes. Now we said and made it clear internal method. What do you have to do? First of all, go inside your head element. Where is my head element? You could see this is the opening tag of the head element, and this is closing tag. Inside of it, we can say that. Now the head element contains this meta element. It contains this meta element as well, and contains this meta element as well. Okay, and contain the title element. If I want to add anything inside of this, you could see where the head element, the less than of the head element, starts from. Okay, and the less than of the beta element starts from. Are they of the same line? No. It means that. Our meta element is now inside of the wall of the head element. I hope I've made myself clear. In the same way and vein, if I want to, if I want to add something, if I want to add something inside of this guy, then I'll have to come here, come down. With the internal uh, CSS, you will need what? The style. Element so you call on style and there you go. This is not fine. I'm getting rid of this guy and call on my style, my style element. Okay, so what is the difference between an element and a property? So you could see that the an element value the element has a less than and what a greater than just after before and after the name of the element respectively. However, you can see that the attribute here, which is the star attribute, not have less than or greater than just before and after the name, which is star. It star have equal to just after the name, okay, just after the name. That's really good. Let's move on. So let's go back to our work. Then we are saying that all your styling should be inside of your style element, inside the head element. Okay. So now I want to apply changes to this element. Okay. To this element H2, D, and the less p okay so what do i do i will just go up here go up here first of all call h2 okay the h2 here is called a selector when we get into css you understand better for now you will just have to stick with it i'm calling h2 give it a space and call on open and closing calibrations open them by clicking on enter then what value or what property about the H do you want to change? I want to change maybe the color. I'll call on the color property and select it from the list I'm giving. Click on enter. Okay. Then maybe I will change that one to red and give it what colon just for that. What other property do you I want to change about the H2 element? I'll call on transact. And maybe change it to something a bit readable, which is 40 pixels. Okay. And maybe give it column 
I send in colon just after that. Then what other property do I want to change about this? This year I should give you some border. Okay, so I'll just call on border and there I go. Okay, border. Should be having border straight here. Okay, so border. And there I go. Okay. So this one is not giving me because I made a mistake. I have to do this myself. Give it a space and call on the sizes. So five pixels for the border size and call on the solid, which is the type of the border. And I will give it a color, which is, I mean, click on P and take maybe powder, blue or purple. Purple. And we are good to go. Just close this. So I am done with the H2 element. Whatever that I want to add to my H2 element, I'm now done. I'll go outside the second or the closing calibrations, click enter and click another enter, just to give it a space for my work to be very, very readable. Give this one to a space to separate it from this guy, okay? That's really great. And it come here. Then I'll call on my paragraph element. Give it a space, call on what a calibration. Press on enter to give a space between them. And I will start color. I want to change the color of this paragraph element to aqua. Okay. Or do you want aqua marine? Okay. So aqua is okay. That's fine. Then I'll give it what a semicolon. From the next property. I gave this one font size of 40 and I should let uh, okay. I give it this one, I'll give it 35 pixels, okay, to make it a bit smaller than my heading. Then what else? I don't actually need a border. So let's see border and the none. Okay. Border and see none. Okay, like that. Um, this. After that, I will just press on Control plus S to save my work. So now I am expecting some changes to last tab that we did right. Internal CSS method two and um, internal CSS are uh, taken internal CSS. Let's go to our browser, refresh, and see the output. Let's go. There we go. So you could see I have what internal CSS method two inside here with a very nice color. Very nice color. The other reason why we are having this color is because we didn't apply any color to our first H2 element. Okay, to our first H2 element. So to make this, we also apply to that. Then we have this color changing from the normal blue to what a very nice color which we cannot see haha <laughs> which we can see and it's very very bad because if you make a website that people cannot read what you have written or the info that you have laid out there then i say you have a very very poor uh uh website let me choose some good for this and let's save it now so that we would be able to reach something a bit. Now it is a bit okay and somehow readable, but still not the best. So I will choose some better color this time around and maybe black color. Oh, RGB 00. zero. No, I don't like the black color. So maybe I should take it somewhere. Uh, yes, this guy is a bit okay. And there we go. Okay, so that's fine. Control plus S. I've saved my work browser. Then refresh. See my work now. Okay, so there's my color now. I hope you are getting it. So that's what and internal c s internal c s s s that's fine let us move on to the next thing 
what is the external CSS? You remember? Oh, that's great. It is very, very important. You remember? So, call on H2 element and say external, external what? CSS method. Sorry. Method three. Okay. Method three. Let's turn outside here and maybe do some bit of writing here. And there we go. Paragraph. Okay. Well, and external PSS. Next one, P. Bam. And external PSS. Okay. So let's copy this and make some duplications over here. Then come down a bit. That's fine. Enter control plus B. Enter control plus B. So control plus B. Enter. Control plus B. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so let's do this guy three and we are good to go. Three and we are good to go. That's fine. So control plus S. Control plus S. I've saved my work. Let's go to this guy. Refresh it and now we should be seeing something different over here. So we are having this guy because uh of the h2 element that we did for okay because of the h2 element that we did call that's fine so we'll be changing the color for this mm -hmm. the color for this now as we said an external css has to be created an external css file should be created different and separated from the html file okay so let's go to our uh, styles folder. Let me close this guy. Go to my styles folder, open it, and I should have what a new file. I'll call it CSS dot CSS again, and I am good to go. Okay, so in this case, I'll just pull on my paragraph element, give it some space, and call on. This guy it and say color, then choose from the list, then dark orange, dark red, and dark summer. So dark red is okay. That's all that will be changing here. Now I'll go back to my colors that HTML file. Go up. In this case, I need to be inside my word, my head element. No? I need to come to CSS rather. Yeah, it is in CSS. So let me go to CSS. Then go just right inside of what my head element. Then I'll just call on the link element. See, when I call on the link element, we have link, link atom, link CSS, this link favicon and other stuff. We just choose link CSS. See the real attribute I made mention of. It always has what a value of style sheet. Then here we'll be specifying the name of our style sheet. Remember how we dealt with our style sheet earlier on? So it is CSS.CSS. Now we are inside of our HTML file. Then also we need to go out, we go outside with two dots and what? Uh, forward slash in there. We choose from the list styles. Okay. If you are not Giving styles, or if you're on a phone, Android, or iOS, then you have to type this. But if you are using easy HTML, then you have a recommendation. Okay. If you're also using Travel Dates, I'm sure you will get a recommendation. So you choose that, go inside your styles, and you choose the CSS.CSS 
and there you go. Control plus S to save your work. Control plus S to save your work. Now we go there and we should expect our last paragraph that we, we wrote in, in the color what dark red. Okay, so let's go refresh our browser and there we go. So you can see it in the color dark red. Color dark red. Maybe I should enlarge it. Here they are. Okay, here they are. Okay, so that's actually fine and very great. Now let's down with the three methods of specifying HTML, CSS, and linking them together. I would want to go the extra mile or extra step and give you a bonus for free, a free bonus in this lesson. Free bonus in this lesson. Okay, a free bonus in this lesson. Okay, so let me go inside here. Okay. I'll call on H3 and see. Uh, I would want to teach you something. This is a bonus that I'm giving you. I want to teach you a bit about colors, a bit about fonts, a bit about um, and some like sizes, okay? Sizes. This bonus that I'm giving you, bonus, bonus that I'm giving you, that's fine. Okay. Here we will demonstrate some commonly used CSS properties. You will learn how to use them later on. I will just want to have a quick recap and uh, refresh of it. When we begin very deep and uh, we dive deeper in CSS, this stuff will become very, very easy. So, here we will talk about the color property, which we have already done that. We we'll also talk about the font family property, which defines the font to be used, and the font size property will define the text size to be used. So the only thing we are left here is the font family. The font family. Okay. So I would just want to demonstrate that one here. Okay. Call on your style word, your style word attribute. That's great style attribute and a column font what family so choose from the list over here and you see we have different 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 font families over here different 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 font families i will teach you very deeper in later lessons but for now i just want you to select cursive if we don't have the options i beg of you to type cursive inside the font family and we are going to go control plus s save your work and let's go to our browser maybe i should increase the font size a bit over here because i don't want anything smaller okay font size and i will say maybe i want this guy to be very very bigger so 60 pixels would be fine that's great now i've saved my work let's go to my browser my very nice browser refresh it and we should be seeing something better now okay so you see we have been able to change the font family of this test which is the h3 element font family is just the way your texts are written okay and there are different different properties or different different values that you can set the font family property to we will dive deeper in this one we will begin css so it is very important to see that so we get to css so that you will be able to understand fully how to use the font family for now have given you a free bonus and you have gotten it without a penny without a penny that's really great and it is only possible with rules consult okay with rules consult i would also want to talk a bit about css borders mm -hmm. css border okay border is something that we have been using and we have been using it a lot okay the css border property defines a border around an html element okay you can define border for nearly all HTML elements, for nearly all HTML 
and so the border crop tool is almost applicable to all html elements okay so i just want to define a border property over here all what i'm doing now is by the power of what an inline method of applying css i'll call on my other property and there is one thing that i want you to know see when i'm setting the border i always give it a numeric value and numeric a numeric value and then assign uh unit to that okay we will dive deeper in this once later on but for now you will have to stay with me and understand now let's start i will just start with something like one pixels one pixels okay we will learn what pixels is later on if and only if they would ask to the end then this is the type of the order we will be changing these so that you get to know them better then i will use it i'll give it the color red okay now i want to increase the font size a bit because it might seem a bit smaller font size and maybe let me make it 55 pixels this time okay control plus s and let's come to our browser and refresh it okay let's refresh our browser and we should be getting something better now so this is what we have CSS border, and you could see we have a very thin line, which is almost in the form of what a rectangle around the CSS border, which is a text. Now let's come here. Let me increase this guy a bit to 10 pixels. Control plus S to save my work first. Then let me come here. Okay, let me refresh it and let's note the difference. What I see, you see that now the thin border has increased in size and weight and what maybe something better again okay so that's it now if i'm to increase this to maybe 15 what do you think should would happen control plus s and let me go to the browser again refresh it okay refresh it i, I hope you are noticing something it is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger okay so we say that the first value that you set to the border property which is the 15 pixels in this case set the size of the border now we have this one let me come here i would like to change this back okay i would love to change this let me choose something like dashed okay dash dash and let's notice the difference now let's go back here to our browser refresh our browser and see the difference what are you seeing the continuous light that we're seeing has now changed to what dashed hey okay now let us try and change this guy again something like dotted okay dotted control plus s so what do you expect the dash line should be what dotted right that's right it gets it right so this is what we are having okay so we say the next value that you set to the border property should be the style of the style of the border okay the style of the border the last one is also the color so in case i decide to give it a very wonderful color other than this let's see if i go in for green yellow green yellow then uh green yellow where are you guys come here bam then i should be having a different color for my border okay which is very very important very very important i hope you are seeing it so we use this to change the color i hope this lesson has been very important useful and very educative I don't want to exit here or pause here. I want you to learn more. So you know what? I'm giving you another bonus for free. Another bonus for free. Another bonus for free. I told you I have different different gifts for you in this lesson, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Exactly what I am doing. Okay. Now, I want to talk about something that's called the 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 pattern pattern. Padding, padding, 
pardon, pardon, okay, pardon. I will, when we say pardon over here, pardon, and I'm getting some strange marking over there, right? Yes, I should get it. Then I will say um uh twenty pixels, twenty pixels. No, okay. First of all, let me give it one pixel, and uh, I will need. This guy to separate them for two classes. Now it should work. Pardon. Pardon. Let's come here. I will refresh this and please note the difference. Okay, let me change this guy back to a solid so that you will be able to note and note the difference very well for me. Okay, solid. We so have changed it back to solid. Now let's go back. Let's refresh our browser. What are you seeing? Nothing better, right? Let's Try and measure something here. You want to be very keen, huh? Very, very keen. You want to be detectives today. Try and measure the space between the first scene, which is this guy, okay, and the border. So let's try and see. I'll be increasing the pattern bit by bit. Now I'll go to 10, and it is nothing much. So let me come here. Then let me refresh the browser again. Let's see. What are you noticing? Is the C going away from this? Uh, sorry, from this uh, border? Maybe. Okay. So why don't we do it? Fifteen. This something. Fifteen. Control plus S. Control plus S. Save my work. Then back to browser. Refresh it. And let's see. Bam. Are you noticing something, my brother, my sister? Are you noticing something? Come come here. You see the sea is gradually moving away from what? The border over here. Now let me let me let me, let me try and make it 20 for your own weight. Hmm? 20. Control plus S. I've saved my work. I I, I guess or I assume. Then yeah. are you noticing something? Huh? Isn't the border is also expanding? Did, did you notice that? Okay, let me 30 and you see something 25. 25. Control plus S, my work is saved. Back to my browser, property plus. Ah, oh, hmm? are you noticing something? So the C is gradually moving out from this. So we say that the padding is just a proxy to help you give some spacing between the test and the border. So the space between the test and the border is called padding. Okay, it's what we call the padding. We have space here. Space between this border and this, space between this border and this, space between this border and that, and space between the down border and the test. Okay, so it means we have four different paddings, and they are the padding left, padding top, padding right, uh, <laughs> padding bottom, and back padding left. I think I'm done. So padding left, padding top, padding right. Padding button, and that's that. So there are four different paddings. So that's padding. I would love to give you something better now. Better now. I said I have too many gifts for you. Should I say so many gifts? However you call it, I say too many gifts. Okay. So I will say margin. Next one I'm talking of is what we call margin. You can see margin for the list. I've selected margin. Now I will just want to give it one pixel. Let me say control class S. Or better still, let me give it zero. Zero pixel. Zero pixel. And if it's zero, we don't need to add a pixel, but I don't want to be writing it again. Let me come here and give some spacing between the two properties. Then control class S. And work is see. Let's go. Note the difference between the sizes here and the border. So control plus I'll refresh control plus R to refresh my border and seems my work was the same. Look like this. Okay, now let's move on. Okay, so that's that. Now let's move on. Let's increase the margin bit by bit now. Bit by bit now. Okay. So let me give it 20 pixels straight away. Note some difference for me, please. Okay, 
control plus R and oh have some problem here. Control plus S. Mm. Okay, I would want to go back again to this guy. One pixel. Oh no, I said zero. Zero pixel. Control plus S. Let's some mistake over here. Um, let's see something. Okay, now let's go back, change it to 20, and save our work back. And let's see something. Bam! What are you seeing? Okay, let me go back a bit again. Zero pixels. And let's come here. Okay. Now I'm going it. What are you seeing? Note the space between this guy and the line over here. That's the browser's line. Okay, the browser's line and the line. Note the difference. I'm going to make it 20 now. 20 uh, pixels. Let's go back. Let me refresh it. Note it too. Bam. What are you seeing? It's moving away from it gradually. Okay. And you will also see some difference over here. Let me go here, make this 40 now. And you should see something very uh, substantive now. Okay. Okay. Now let's refresh. What are you seeing? It is actually moving. Moving. You are getting spaces, right? Okay, that's fine. Maybe we should make it 80 this time around. And see something substantive. Okay. Then. The last one, bam. What are you seeing? Okay. So you can see that the border is becoming smaller and it is moving away from both sides of the line. Okay, that's very, very important. Imagine if the space between two or more elements, how close the elements are and how open elements are they set by using the margin. Because there are four sides. For the margin, let me go to my browser. We have this side, we have this side, we have that side, we have that side. We have margin top, margin right, margin button, and margin left. Okay, so there are four margins is available for you to use for free. For free, for free. I hope I've given you enough in this lesson, and you have also taken enough. You have learned a lot. A quick summary for whatever we've treated so far in this lesson. For whatever we've treated so far in this lesson. So we have learned how to use the style attribute for inline styling. We have also learned how to use the style element for internal styling. And we have also learned how to use the link element to refer to an external CSS file. We have also learned how to use the head element to store style element and the link element. We have also learned how to use the color property for test colors, color property for borders, color property for background colors, and so on and so forth. We have learned a bit about font family, font size, border padding, and margin. And this brings us to the end of this lesson. I hope the lesson has been very educative, intuitive, and uh, very informative. Stay tuned, stay blessed. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe. Okay. We love you and we hope to see you at the end of this uh, lesson in our next video. We hope to have you once more. You know, I promised you and I won't forget this. I said I have a very special gift for you, only for you. You know what? I've leave a link in the description below. Just click on it and come to my DM. Come to my DM. I will give you one-on-one -on -one training in website designing and development, and your life will never be the same. Thank you for watching once again. Uh, let's meet in our next lesson. Bye bye.